Thanks everybody for joining. I'd also like to say a special thanks to Martin Mikos and, and Mark Miller for sharing some time this morning. And for you, freshmen, uh, my name is Michael. I'm CEO of Bitwarden. And uh, <clears throat> this is as close as we're going to get to a fireside chat uh, during this, uh, this pandemic. But why don't you kick us off? Give us a little snapshot of your background in IT and security, freshmen. Sure. So um, I'm an enterprise security architect at Red Hat, um, and and like Mark, uh, today's um, you know conversation is is uh, my own opinions and viewpoints, and, and not necessarily that of my employer. Um, but I, I love my role uh, as an architect at, at Red Hat. It um, it seems like every day is is a new adventure. Uh, I work across the organization. Um, I kick over rocks and and logs and and try to identify potential issues that uh, uh, that pop up, um, I, and then work with the stakeholders to to address them. Uh, you know whether it's um, you know trying to find a long term strategic solution, um, looking at the the operational or tactical technical security uh, you know means of remediation, or uh, simply focusing on a more practical refining a practical solution uh, for our users uh, and our customers. Um, so using that that um, knowledge, I also work on creating the the, the uh, modifying our our uh, existing enterprise security standards and policies that we have in place to make sure that that uh, um, the organization is up to date with uh, with those. Um, prior to joining Red Hat, I've spent twenty plus years uh, working for several global organizations, uh, both in the public and private sectors, um, applying and, and and building on. Um, you know, the, the many roles that I had, whether it was looking at offensive and defensive security, uh, customer harming, fraud and abuse, threat intelligence, uh, social engineering, uh, all manner of risk and, you know, a myriad of other things that you don't talk about at cocktail parties when there's a pandemic happening. So, <laughs> uh, you know, larger, larger, small, you know, if I've, I've gotten to see a lot across IT and, and the different ways that, that organizations operate. Um, you know, from from small four person shops all the way up to you know Fortune fifty uh, organizations, and you know every every organization has a different culture. Um, every organization has a different set of security requirements, risks, and threats. Um, and and I think it's you know it's great to be able to have that diversity when looking at security and being able to see it through an entirely different lens. Um, a more hybrid approach to to security defense, um, because it helps you, especially in the open source space, to be able to 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 identify problems more easily, um, and come up with better solutions. Hmm. Well, kudos on that on that background. You've spent decades in uh, in a high stress area, as Martin mentioned. It's uh, all shades of gray. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about this year. Twenty twenty has been a tumultuous year to say the least. Massive, massive increase in work from home, uh, which has put extra strain on security systems. And, uh, you know, from what we see out there in the statistics, 400% increase in phishing, uh, major uptick in cybersecurity claims. From your perspective at Enterprise Ground Zero, so to speak, um, what do you, what do you most seeing most and, and most worried about out there between phishing, credential stuffing, uh, social engineering, stolen credentials. What's what, what are your biggest worries there? Can, can I can I just choose E all of the above? Um, <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> I mean, you know, social engineering continues to be a huge, huge issue. Um, you know, it's it's a uh, uh, it's a huge attack vector for baddies, and you know we're we're seeing it's not just for email anymore, right? We've got, um, you know, we're getting phone calls, uh, social engineering happening via the phone, um, you know, via social media. Um, we're seeing it in the mail, we're seeing it in uh, in our our chat messages, and uh, you know, social engineering or uh, social messaging apps. Um, you know, it's always great to get a to get a message on WhatsApp from your from your president asking you if you could wire some money to uh, to some you know to some lawyer somewhere because um, that that always happens. Um, but it, you know, I, I think that that is a you know that the, the social engineering continues to be that that 
um, vehicle, right? And you, you start looking, I mean, 400% this year. That's huge. And, and you know, it, it's credentials continue to be the thing that baddies want out of this. I mean, they're looking for data, but they're also looking for the credentials. And, you know, it, it's, um, and there's probably a really good reason for that. I, I read something where it was, um, you know, credential re reuse is like 64% in the public space right now. Um, you know, we've got, if you're not using a password manager, I think that the average number of, of, of passwords that have to be memorized is, is something like 90, per, you know, 90 different credentials. Um, you know, so, uh, there's a you know a bunch more statistics around how we're doing this in the enterprise versus how we're doing this at home, but I think that that it's there's a lot of carryover between the two, right? What we do, especially now with the pandemic happening and 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 being forced to uh, for for many to be at home, you know we have to wear a lot more hats. We've got a lot more uh, personal device use and crossover, um, you know, when we have organizations um that only you know 50 percent of them require multi-factor authentication or less than 40 percent you know require the use of a password manager you know that that adds to you know these types of um these types of threats that we're seeing it doesn't help prevent these things it just makes makes the, the situation worse right you know you made an interesting comment there about the uh, the fact that this problem set spans the worlds of uh, work life and personal life. How how do you think about that in in terms of a solution? Do you do you segregate those? How do you think about personal and work and and the role of uh, your role in helping increase the security uh, around credential management? So I think that it's important that we um, you know that we we bring awareness. It's got to be a collaborative effort. Um, but I, I think that we need to be thinking about more than um, the user in the in the workplace. Um, you know, we have to think about the devices that we're using and, and how we're using them. We, you know, in open source organizations, you know, may have open device usage policies, right? And how do we um, look and manage the identify and, and manage the risk? But but also, how do we manage the user experience as well? Um, you know, to ensure that we're giving the 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 users, um, you know, our customers the right tools for the job. Um, you know, I think it's I think that there is to a certain degree a layered approach that needs to happen. And, you know, awareness is certainly one thing, one aspect of that. But how do we, you know, it needs to go just beyond awareness, right? Fishing happens. You're aware now. I mean, that's a you know, I, I'm going on break. It, it, it's, it's we've got to do more than just be able to provide, um, you know, the updates on what the, the latest phishing campaign is. I think that that you know we need to be able to provide the right tools, and even providing the right tools that will overlap between personal personal life, and and work life, so that we're setting this the right bar. We're setting the right standards for our users to make sure that they actually understand, um, and it's and it's muscle memory for them to continue using these these tools and capabilities. Mm -hmm. I know from past conversations that you take a very practical perspective on all this. Uh, so tell us a bit more about that. What what are the biggest uh, challenges from a practical perspective? Um, I think it's you know it's balancing uh, usability and, and security. Right, uh, we need greater transparency, and we need you know it needs to to be easy to use. Our users are not are are very very smart. Right. And I, 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 I hate seeing an industry where, um, you know, we, we treat the user as, uh, a, you know, a lesser citizen because they fail to um, to catch the phishing attempt or the social engineering attempt or they click on the link for the ransomware and things. And it's like we, you know, we let them down, um, you know, it, it's um, or we're giving them the tools to be able to do things. But, you know, we, we're. Um, you know, we have our security policies and requirements in place, but we're we're in, we have to, to to force them to use five different passwords, 
in order to be able to get to the services and, and resources that they need on a daily basis. Um, we give them password managers, but we don't allow them to use the 2FA functions to be able to store TOTP tokens within within the password manager. You know, um, things things like that. Um, you know, uh, how do we how do we get that that right tool to the user? Um, and and how do we ensure that the process is there? Um, I can give you an example of of thinking more about the user experience and and why that's important. Uh, so, um, a number of years ago, I was working for a Fortune 50 organization um, that had an unfortunate uh, you know phishing breach. Um, credentials were compromised, uh, and the accounts that were were targeted um, were then used to be able to do to reset uh, passwords for um, you know social media accounts for the organization. Those accounts were uh, were then uh, defaced. Uh, it was a black eye on the brand, um, but but it happened. And you know management is as part of an after action said we need phishing training. Right. This this all started with phishing. Somebody clicked on something that they weren't supposed to. Entered in credentials. We need phishing training. So you you and your team go build the phishing training. Um, and we did, and you know, we had all of the right hits. Uh, we had, you know, hover over links, uh, make sure that you understand who it's being sent from. Um, you know, have uh, uh, you know, if you if you for whatever reason don't understand, you know, or don't not sure whether or not this is phishing, you know, send it to InfoSec, and, and InfoSec will take care. Of, you know, we'll we'll look at it and we'll let you know. Um, you know all the typical stuff that you would you would pass as part of your security awareness and compliance training, and and we did, and we put together the training, and it went out, and everyone took it, and and uh, thought it was great, and it was you know pats on the back and handshakes all around, awesome. And then I stopped for a second and started thinking about what we had just done, and went back to uh, one of the the VPs who was responsible for this, who was leading this effort, and said, hey, by the way. Um, what was the email address that we used for where, where are people supposed to send the phishing if they find it? And he thought about it for a second. He's like, it's, um, no, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I can't remember. And so I started asking other people on the team and other people in the organization and no one could remember. I mean, it wasn't, it was big enough but no one could remember where it was to go. And I looked at that and I said, we failed. Because one of two things is gonna happen. Uh, after, after two minutes of looking at this, you know, uh, Allison Accounting is gonna, is, you know, if, if she can't find the email address is gonna do one of two things, either delete the message or is going to, to, to click on the link or, or do what we didn't want them to do to begin with because there's just an assumption that it's probably okay, but InfoSec's gonna get mad with me either way. I just hope that they actually had the protections in place to be able to prevent this. And that's a really sad thing to think about. So, um, you know, we need to make sure that we, we think through the user process. Um, our users may be, may be lazy to a certain extent, but there are also people that are trying to have a, an entirely different job and mindset than we do. Um, and, I, and I think it's important that we, we incorporate them into the conversation and make sure that they understand uh, what it is that we're asking. We understand what their needs are and we give them something simple. Um, sure, we're getting, we're getting to human nature here, aren't we? Which is uh, who we're working with. In fact, you've, you've made a comment in the past about uh, we don't hire for security awareness, say a bit more about that. Right. I, I mean, I I would be surprised if anyone on on you know in this conference has had ever seen or submitted a job description, you know, whether it's an administrative assistant or someone in accounting, um, you know, or HR that listed as a as a required job skill, you know, must be able to generate complex credentials for multiple systems every 90 days, or, you know, has a proven track record of, of identifying and reporting phishing uh, in a timely manner. Like it just doesn't happen, but we hire these people and they're very good at what they do, hopefully, they're very good at what they do, but, they, but then we put them into new hire orientation and we bombard them <clears throat> with security 
uh, requirements and training and and have this expectation that they're going to to you know this should be common knowledge for them should be easy for them to pick up um without the without the tooling so i think you know human nature we need to you know it, it's not something that everyone grasps immediately um and again i think that that it's the seeing organizations with with zero tolerance to three strike policies for phishing um for things like phishing that is constantly being trained i think is also can be um a bit scary because we're we're almost treating them like the first line of defense, first, last, and only line of defense. If we don't have appropriate tools in place to be able to push them um, and, and help them feel like they are not the only ones involved in this journey, um, I think that that's important. Right. That's right. You've, you've said before that uh, we shouldn't see the user as, as the only line of defense in this whole picture. Single point of success. Correct. <laughs> Good. By the way, did you ever find a solution to the phishing email, the difficult to remember phishing email problem? So one of the things that I suggested about that is, um, you know, I went back and, and I, why in the world do we not have a button, right? Why in the world do we not have an easy point and click solution to you know, we have a message, this looks dodgy. I want to be able to pass this over to, to my InfoSec team. I want to be able to pass this to, you know, whatever my mail service provider is. If I'm, if I'm not, you know, working in a small business, um, you know, and I'm leveraging Google or Microsoft, where, where do I, how do I get this message into a solution that's already existing and advertised um, to make sure it's a part of my organization's workflow, my company, my security team's policies, um, and, and see whether or not I'm right. Um, instead, what I've seen is the, um, I've seen solutions where, um, you know, we have a, a number of small companies that, that do produce toolbars and things like that, but we have, we have solutions right now that, um, you pay big money for th that are, will modify links within emails. Um, do a bunch of things and validation on the back end, um, create gamification for our users. Um, and it's, and it's all in an attempt. Like, I don't think that they've thought through and we, in the conversations I've had with them, they haven't thought through the user experience in that workflow. Um, how are we encouraging people to click on links, right? By doing this. And if they do click on the link, what's the ramifications within the organization? Um, this is all within the battle space of an attacker. The attacker controls the body of the message. And if we're incorporating ribbons and, and things and, and modifying links and we're creating muscle memory for our users that I think is, is counterproductive to what it is that we're trying to, we're trying to accomplish. So I've worked with organizations and say, look, I think that this is the thing, the direction that we need. And I think it's just a matter of time now. We have to that more organizations and and more security professionals need to to start asking that question. Why don't we have this? Why aren't we thinking right. about the users, the users, uh, uh, the user experience? Very much in the line of what Martin Mikos was talking about with democratizing security, and everybody has uh, their small part to play. Great. Last question is: uh, What do you see for twenty twenty one, or rather, what would you like? to see what are your priorities and what would you like to see in the security industry? Um, as we continue to um, build out uh, and, and, and bring more people along for the open source journey, I, I think that it's important that we um, we make sure that, that, that the secure user experience is a part of that. Um, you know, continue to educate, continue to encourage people to think about using multi-factor authentication, continue to think about how we interconnect all of these different capabilities and think about you know what's the long-term user experience going to be as we change multi-factor options or as we look at trying to to detect uh you know phishing or secrets or things open source you know source code management uh you know continues to be a a, a target now it's not just you know intellectual property of closed source organizations um 
we need to to help educate um, the communities to to push this further um, and think about as well interconnected devices. You know, the the, the that hybrid work environment to bring your own device and how we through open source can can better secure that. So um, that's my hope for 2021. Um, we'll see. Amen. Amen. Freshman, may it be so. 